For example, now it is a very good thing that I was with Mahatma Gandhi and people have got great respect for Mahatma Gandhi. Of course, and Mahatma Gandhi was very much impressed by me, no doubt. Even when I was a child, he used to consult me. And the, uh, the, uh, the proof of that is that in his bhajans, he has uh, put the serial of the uh, bhajans in different ways, starting from the heart, talking about the Atma, and then he starting from the uh, Muladhara upward, like that. So, I mean, that's one of the proofs that he, uh, he must have consulted me. But whatever it is, you have can use him also that Sri Mataji is doing what Mahatma Gandhi said. He has talked about Sarva Dharma Samanatva, means all the religions are treated with same respect and same understanding. Once you start talking like that, you see, then people will understand that it has some noble heritage behind it, because everybody wants to know from what book I have learnt. I mean, I have never learnt from any book, that you know very well. But you can say that she is the one who was with him and that she was very much impressed by her. And the same ideas of peace and non-violence and all that, these are the same techniques and methods she wants to use. That's a fact, no doubt. But Mahatma Gandhi was a very fiery speaker. All people who have followed him were very fiery. They were not just, all right, uh, come along, have a cup of tea and uh, this kind of thing is not going to work out. So Americans need challenge and they need really a fiery person to blast them. So now if you go on this way, like the other day when we had a program in New York uh, and there were so many uh, black people and so many uh, uh, Chinese and then there were so many uh, Indians and very few were whites. So whites came and said, oh, nothing has happened to me, you know. So then what you have to do? Nothing has happened. Yes, that's what, must be something wrong with you or must be you must have committed some sins or something. So then they get a shock. Oh, it's something surprising. You haven't got it. Oh, it's very wrong. Something wrong with you. You should get it. Try to get it. You know, it's very wrong. I hope you don't have cancer. Then. <laughs> or you can ask, are you suffering from AIDS? No, no, no. Then what are you suffering from? How is it you didn't get it? You see, this black man got it. This uh, Chinese has got it. Why don't you get it? You are a white-skinned man. You should get it first. <laughs> then things will work out. I have been thinking about it, why these Americans are so dull. Because, you see, they are on the whole very dull people, extremely dull. Because this kind of a rock music, you see, if you play before anyone, people <laughs> would run away. <laughs> what is this going on? But the way they like this rap music yesterday, they wanted me to listen. The heart started beating the other way round. I said, what's happening? And the whole thing started shaking. I sat on a bench and the whole bench was shaking. The uh, Who sat with me was, uh, he was there and also Karan was there and uh, we found <laughs> that he, Karan, everybody was jumping <laughs> like that. On It was like a earthquake going on. Uh, so this is what it is, that you see, these people are very, very dull people and numbed out. And they are numbed out because of their so-called freedom. It's like you go and ask a bull, come and hit me, sort of thing, you see. They have gone out of the way to numb themselves completely. And this numbness, maybe alcohol, maybe drugs, maybe women, uh, maybe marrying so many times. Say, if you marry one time, it's sufficient. If you marry five times, I mean, you become uh, I don't know what, like a... I don't know if there's any animal like that. <laughs> but something, you become absolutely numb to things, you see? Because first of all, marrying one wife, then you have attachments with her, you have children, and you... I mean, after all, uh, it's so much to do with your wife, and then suddenly you divorce, and you don't feel anything. You don't feel it, it's great numbness. And if you tell them, yes, I know, I know, I know, 
They know, but they don't feel. They don't feel that they are doing anything wrong. They don't feel they have done anything uh, absurd, and they don't suffer. Any other person would suffer. Yes, uh, he has divorced his wife, and he becomes really uh, a person quite lost. Should be normally, but here, what you find, uh, very nicely boasting. You know, I I have divorced my two wives, and I'm, this third one is coming up. You can meet her. So there's, there's no shame about it. No shame. No feelings, nothing. I mean, you married a woman, you lived with her, she was your wife, and you have no feelings for her. Your own children also, they have no feelings at all. No feelings. Of course, they are not like English, where the English people kill their children, so that's not so bad. But here I have heard also that they kill husband, wife, kills each other, and all that. And for what? For love. When they do not have love for one husband, how are they going to have love for another husband? I can't understand. Love is a quality of heart. So this is what it is, if you see the whole character, is numbed out, because they don't behave like human beings. They behave like, I don't know, again I say, I don't know like whom, because there's no comparison whatsoever. So it is not that only in America people are like that. It's all over, but in America it is too much, too much of it. And all such things rise from America, all such funny uh, notions rise from America, and everybody takes them because they know how to advertise, they know how to make it very uh, uh, very popular. Once I was travelling by a, by a ship and a pilot came over the ship and he was talking to me and he told me that his brother is a very nasty devil. I said, what happened? So he said that he got hold of uh, these four boys who were Beatles, and he became their manager. And he started this mu music and got some women, got them drunk, put them on drugs, and the first music, when they had that music, uh, these girls started screaming, <coughs> shouting, going mad, and it became popular. Normally the reaction would be that, bah, it's such a thing that when the music starts the girls go mad, so don't go to such a music. On the contrary, so many started coming. How do you explain this kind of a reaction? The more they shout, the more they scream, according to them is something. Means behind it is one thing, that it has touched them somehow. Otherwise, why will they scream? Means such dumb people have been touched by something, is something great, and all of us should go, we are also dumb, so we should attend to it. Now, you may ask me that, Mother, how, how this dumbness has come into people and this. It's as simple as that, as I told you, that they have used their freedom to such an extent, their attention to such a wasteful uh, pursuits, that they have become really numb. Their attention doesn't feel anything. Attention, when you put it out, it reacts and it comes back to you uh, as something. But if you all the time go on bombarding outside your attention, this um, bombardment from outside just finishes all your sensitivity. There's no feeling, there's no attachment, uh, there's no, uh, no recording of anything that is happening. So for that I think Vishnu Maya is needed. And that's why she's placed on the left side, because Vishnu Maya is the one in charge of people who have become absolutely feelingless. That's why she's there to give you the feeling. So she on the left side, when she shines, she gives you the feelings and people start understanding. So now the only thing that they have is a kind of a mental idea that they are guilty. That's all. This is just mental. If it is mental idea, oh, I am guilty, then you are not going to feel it. I mean, if you are uh, saying that you are mad when you are not mad, if anybody calls you mad, you are not going to feel it. It's like this. So they don't feel it at all, because it is all mentally accepted uh, thing and they have become numb. Now nobody can harm me, so what's wrong? Sort of an attitude. I would now ask you people to go all out 
and become fiery, write in newspapers and say what's happening and how things are. I'm writing a book like that now. It's called as Meta Modernism, and as far as I could be uh, fiery, I'm going to be there to tell them what's wrong with them, and they should see to it that it's all wrong. No use uh, trying to uh, call it something great. Like now, AIDS have come up. I thought with AIDS they will be awakened. So now the AIDS have become a martyrdom. Uh, now the UP, UPs came up. I said the UPs, UPs will suffer from a disease. So now they said, no, 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 it's very nice to be UPs. After all, you see, they are another heroes who died for their UPs. Like you see, every stupidity is made into a something kind of a very glorifying thing. So just, and people accept it. That's the best part of it. They accept it. So it is important for you to be fiery and to show them in that light what they are. They have to be shown. It's not just the little light of the Spirit will show them much, but it's the real uh, dazzling, uh, burning light of a lightning. So today's puja is going to be specially for you all to develop that creativity of talking, behaving in every way, in a fiery way. That is going to put them right, nothing else. In creative work also, when we create something or we sing something and all that, uh, if you go on singing, say, in our Indian style, uh, some music which is vilambitta, uh, you see, very slow talas, that won't come. They like somebody like Ravi Shankar, who just goes on mixing up notes and just goes on playing something which is very, very uh, unscientific according to Indian thing and is not at all entertaining, it doesn't open your heart and something like that. But that is the thing that appeals to them, to go into a big sort of a rock and roll sort, make it titar into rock and roll and even worse than that, I don't know the new, latest one, I don't know what it is. So. The second thing is that you can see how they try to shock people. Also they try to shock people, because they know that they are also like us. Like you go in the market, you find somebody, uh, his pant is not pant, even half pant, is all torn at wrong places. And it is just to shock people. Uh, they are supposed to hear at least they are supposed to, in America it is supposed to be, you have to dress up decently. You should not be indecently dressed. That's what they want. But what you find, whatever chance they can get to dress up in a way that you will be shocked, they would like to do. Like they'll have only one part of the hair as white. I mean anything, anything is possible, just to shock others. Shock others and attract the attention. And what do you get? Nothing. You spend so much money to attract the attention of others, but what do you get? That attention doesn't give you anything, doesn't pay you anything, doesn't compensate. So it's such a joyless pursuit they get it. All these things spoil their attention, it destroys it to this extent that they are feeling less people. They have no feelings now. And then the worst thing that has happened is that I have become absolutely money oriented. So the money is another side of Saraswati. Saraswati is uh, different from Lakshmi. So the Lakshmi and Saraswati never go hand in hand. This is the reason why when they get after Lakshmi, run after money too much, they get shocks because there's a suddenly you find the stock exchange has fallen, there's a recession, this business has gone, somebody who is very rich suddenly becomes a poor man. It's all the work, this is all the work of the Saraswati. And if somebody is too much in Saraswati, reads too many books, uh, is, uh, uh, is an artist who is very ambitious, who tries to outshine other artists and all that, such a person also gets back a reward from Lakshmi that his things never sell, he never gets money, he starves, all sorts of things. 
So, these two things are in balance only in hamsa or we can say they are in balance when you are a such okay. So, this has to be achieved and is to be uh, put together in balance that you have the blessings of Saraswati as well as that of Lakshmi, but it crosses only at the hamsa point and at the Vishuddhi point. So, what we have to do to bring the balance is that whatever uh, we are earning, whatever we are doing, we should not be in a mediocre way. We should try to do it in a dynamic way, in a fiery way. These two things should be combined at the Vishuddhi level. So now, supposing uh, you are going to give a lecture about uh, Sahaja Yoga in a fiery way and if you wear a dress uh, that you look like a hippie or somebody coming out of a jail, nobody is going to take you seriously. But if you are properly dressed and you look respectable and presentation is good and then you give a fiery speech, everybody is going to listen to you. So this principle of Lakshmi Tattva is to be used with the domination of the Saraswati principle. Now, the another blessings of Saraswati is that uh, you can have knowledge of Sahaja Yoga. I have seen many women, especially in Sahaja Yoga. They are Sahaja Yogis, their vibrations, all that is there. But they, ha- they do not know what is Sahaja Yoga. They do not know what these chakras are. They do not know that how these vibrations go up. Now today's lecture is quite a lecture, quite complicated, I would say, if you see to it. We'll have to listen to it at least four or five times to understand it with a paper and a pencil. It's not an easy thing because I'm telling you now, it's all right, it's quite entertaining, but behind the entertainment there is a deep knowledge. So I have not seen the Sajoginis mostly sit down with a paper and pencil to know what is Mother saying, what is the knowledge she is giving us about the various things. To them Sahaja Yoga means uh, to be nice, to cook good food and help the Sahaja Yogis and uh, that of course for the pujas to wear nice saris and nice dresses, come to the pujas and all that and finish also. So, for them it is very important that they should also know what is Sahaja Yoga. They must listen to my lecture, sit down, study it nicely and understand it. The other way round are the men. For them it is to do the, all the outside work, go round, see things and all that. But as far as uh, relationships are concerned or as far as uh, emotional side are concerned, they are negligent. And that is why Sahaja Yoga by men is different, Sahaja Yoga by women is different. And in France especially it had gone very far away from each other. The women were on one side, men are on the other side. Imagine in Sahaja Yoga to have such a nonsense as that. But then we discovered the person who was doing it and we managed it, so it was settled down and now things are better. But women must know about Sahaja Yoga. But that doesn't mean that uh, they should fight with them or think that they also know what, what these men know. But it's very, very common, I have seen, that men and women are having a different type of attitude towards Sahaja Yoga. One is an extrovert, another is an introvert. But in Sahaja Yoga there is no difference between a woman and a man as far as knowing Sahaja Yoga is concerned. I am a woman myself and I know so much, so why not the women should know about what is Sahaja Yoga? So all the women who are here or all over have to know what is Sahaja Yoga. After I'll look at Vishnu Maya, she is a woman. It's the power that works. Brahma Deva doesn't work, he has created all these things because he has the power of Saraswati, otherwise he could not have created. So everything is done through the power and the power is a woman, but if the power doesn't know what is Sahaja Yoga, how is she going to work it out? 
So the women, though they have children, I know uh, they have to look after the household, kitchen, but it's such a pleasure, such a joy to read about Sahaja Yoga, to understand it, to know it. Of course, some of them do also read. I am not saying that they do not, but they are very, very few and they are very sensible, very sensible. So this is my uh, understanding of today's happening that in this natural surrounding, these uh, natural surroundings where we are blessed by the work of Brahmadeva and Saraswati and where we can feel the capacity of these deities to what extent they can create. The nature is absolutely one with the Divine. Now see, as soon as I came here, the nature knew I am there. It just started acting by itself. I didn't have to give them a lecture, they didn't have to do a puja, nothing of the kind. They knew what I was doing. I went to Los Angeles, same thing. Anywhere I go, the nature knows what is to be done. Now Mother is in the town, so what should we do? And they do it. So this is the trouble, is that I have made to do all kinds of deliberations for human beings, that all right, do this, do that, do that. But I would say that spontaneously to that, because now we are one, just like the nature is one with me, you are also one with me. And that will should start happening when you will really become absolutely drawn into Sahaja Yoga, surrendered into Sahaja Yoga. Then only it will happen. May God bless you.